Does this lawsuit in any way surprise you? Not at all. And you mentioned it. Don't mess with the Swift beef. As soon as they had problems getting tickets to our tour, Congress started holding hearings. This is something that folks anticipated when Live Nation and Ticketmaster merged in 2010, that they would leverage their power, their ability to promote these superstar artists and make concert goes buy tickets through Ticketmaster. It's exactly what's happening. And Justice Department officials foresaw this problem when the two merged about 14 years ago. So talk to us about the reaction here in terms of what can we expect in terms of next steps in this case? Well, I believe Live Nation will litigate this case and litigate it aggressively. They're going to try to get it dismissed at the motion phase. I don't think they're going to push this case all the way to trial. Folks, consumers, politicians, really on both sides of the aisle, are really upset and ticketing companies in general. There's legislation now to get rid of junk or hidden fees. There's problems with scalping. And like we talked about with Taylor Swift, even getting access to these tickets, it's just a big problem and consumers are fed up. So I think rather than risk going to trial and maybe being hit with a judgment, if they lose at that motion phase, we may see a situation where Live Nation sells off or spins off Ticketmaster, and they agree to not enter into these long-term or exclusive deals. You know, we've heard, of course, many a time saying that uh, this company, Live Nation, is actually uh, controlling about 60% of concert promotions at major venues and about 80% of ticketing operations through Ticketmaster. That's, that, that, that figure is something that Live Nation is disputing at the moment. But if this were to split now, as we're discussing, uh, tell us about the impact of this will have on fans who find uh, tickets extremely expensive and the impact on music who say that many a times they are cash strapped. So the issue is Live Nation not only controls the artist promotion, they actually manage a lot of these venues. And of course, we talked about Ticketmaster and that monopoly. So really the question is, would consumers, would artists, would venues be better off if maybe Live Nation was promoting the artist, but someone else was managing the stadium and a third party company altogether was selling the tickets or more than one company selling the tickets? Would that result in better customer service and consumer pricing? as opposed to one company really bundling it all together. It's really these tie-ins that are a problem. And we're seeing it more and more with these big companies, whether it's Google or Meta or Amazon. They provide one service that everyone wants or needs. And as a result, they tie in or bundle these other services that may not necessarily be the best for the consumer or the concert goer. What we're discussing, of course, is the action that the U.S. government is taking. But let me understand uh, from you, what sort of an impact can this really have where the Canadian side is concerned? Because the Canadian government will have to do something similar. Otherwise, we can see this monopoly continue in this country as well. Well, we've seen uh, copycat enforcement actions time and time again, not just in Canada, but also the EU, where they take these anti-competitive and antitrust violations very seriously. Over the past 20 plus years that I've been practicing and I've handled these antitrust cases, it's not surprising when one governmental entity initiates something like this, other countries or jurisdictions follow suit. And it's pretty telling that here in the United States, this lawsuit wasn't just filed by the attorney general. We're talking about 30 states, including the District of Columbia, that joined in those attorney generals. So this is something that's really a problem across the board, regardless of your political ideology. All right. Nima Remani, president of the West Coast Trial Lawyers. Appreciate your time and your insights, Nima. Thank you for joining us. I oh, appreciate you having me, as always.